Hello and good morning, Mark. How are you doing today? Good, Arrow. Great to be here. Thanks app, for having me. App, well, th- you're talking about my favorite subject, how to cook everything fast. I mean, I do. In fact, when it, when it comes to making soups for me, I like to make it so fast and so scalding because it allows time to take over once I start sipping on on, on that broth. Well, that's an interesting point. Things do keep cooking from residual heat, don't they? Yeah, and and and, and so when, when I when I got your book, it was like it's like this guy is speaking my language. He's he's got me at hello. But then again, at the same time, you you absolutely tell us that look, you know, cooking fast doesn't mean compromising, and that was a very big eye opener for me. Yeah, I, there's not there are. I mean, I won't say there are no compromises here, but this is real ingredients making real food, and it's done the way real cooks have learned how to do it. I think the the fundamental underlying difference between How to Cook Everything Fast and most cookbooks is that in this book, we show people how experienced cooks got to where they are, And, and that is by walking into the kitchen and starting to cook. It's not a a process of walking into the kitchen and getting 20 things ready and then starting to cook. It's walking into the kitchen, turning on the heat, and beginning to do your thing. There's a lot of downtime in in cooking, and you can use that downtime to your advantage to prepare whatever comes next. There's just no need to prepare everything in advance, and that's, that's the kind of fundamental difference between how to cook everything fast and most other cookbooks. It's interesting that you bring that up because I call that my jazz. Because, I mean, it's like I like to be moving at all times while things are cooking, setting things up and stuff like that. And it, it almost looks like uh, controlled chaos, but I call it my jazz when I'm moving around like that. Right. Well, you sound like you know how to cook and you sound like you know how to improvise, which is what the word jazz implies. But... But for many people, what they need is guidance in saying, here's how to do things, and here's how to do things in the order that's going to save you time and make your life easier. And that's what I've tried to accomplish here. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, so to see that you've got clam chowder inside this book blows me away. But i got to tell you, what I've jumped into lately, replacing the clams with salmon. Have you tried that? Uh, That sounds really good, actually. And... um, yeah, I have tried that. Uh, you know, the, one of the things I've long said is that almost any ingredient can substitute for almost any ingredient with the exception of the fact that, for example, you can't make a roast chicken without a chicken. <laughs> uh, where, where do most people go wrong when it comes to cooking? Is it really the time management issue? Well... I think it's in some ways, I think it's commitment. I think it's pantry and I think it's learning how to do things in advance. And let me just, I'll give five seconds of detail on each of those commitment is that like anything else that you have to learn how to do from driving to playing tennis, you just get better as you go along. And if you make that commitment, you will find that it becomes, it becomes easier pantry. I think if you have, a good, well-stocked pantry. There's almost no way that you can't make a good meal really quickly. And the third thing, in cooking in advance, almost every time you cook something, something basic, whether it's a pot of rice or a, a pot of beans or some broccoli or almost anything, you might as well cook more than you need because in the next couple of days, you'll find the use for that ingredient. And that'll save you all that time and that second meal. Oh, you're so true about that. I mean, because that's that's how I fell in love with the kitchen. It was during the lockdown of 2020, and that pantry was my best friend. I would stand there and say, "What can I mix today that we wouldn't normally mix?" And and then all of a sudden, like I said, this this book is really right up my alley. Well, yay for you! I think you know, there were a lot of people who learned how to cook and learned how to love it during the lockdown. Of course, there are a lot of people who got tired of it also, but those still. <laughs> serve you will serve you for the rest of your life and and their skills well worth learning the the point of how to cook everything fast is that they're not complicated skills they're skills that our grandmothers our great grandmothers um, people going back 10,000 years have all achieved and we can achieve them too so now when you write a book called how to cook everything fast does that eliminate the air fryer because that dang thing man it's taking its time all the time well, it is a it is a gadget. I mean, I, 
you know, every couple of years, a new appliance co- or a so-called new appliance comes along, and often it's a rebranded invention of another appliance. So the air fryer is really what we used to call a convection oven, yep. maybe jazzed up a little bit, but I don't think it's an essential item to have. But, you know, the Instant Pot or the electric uh, sort of semi-computerized pressure cooker is a reinvention of something that's been around for 100 years. And if you are interested in in fast cooking, a pressure cooker is a really, really useful tool. I think all of us need to recognize that there are appliances that are sort of overhyped and not particularly essential, and there are those that are essential to all of us. Let's remember that the sink and the stove and the refrigerator are all relatively, uh, at least running water-wise, relatively new inventions and things that we all consider essential. One of the things that, that I've taken note of with, with everyday people these days is that canning seems to be the big thing. I mean, they, they are taking things like, for instance, everything that's a, uh, in your book, How to Cook Everything Fast, and what they do is they, they put it in, in jars and stuff for, for future use, which, which is just fascinating to me that, that people have gone back that way. Well, it is the season for it, so it's not surprising that you're thinking of it now. But with access um, and that local farms, access to an emphasis on local farms. I don't think it's surprising that people are rediscovering canning. And again, if you, it's what I said before, if you can cook in advance, it's it's money in the bank or it's time in the bank, I guess. You can get that work out of the way. And when you need that tomato sauce or whatever it is that you put up or you cooked on Sunday to use on Wednesday, you're just ahead of the game. Yeah. One of the things that got my attention was the fact that it, it, it says that you went back and retested the food. Is that because of better tools here in, uh, during, during our season? Um, I mean, we are constantly retrying things and yeah. constantly trying to see if we can refine what we're doing. Uh, it's not so much that the, that the tools are better, but that the ingredients are different or that we think of things more differently. You know, we're... Most people are cooking with less meat than they than they used to, and that calls for recipes that contain less meat. Yeah. So with, with a book that's titled How to Cook Everything Fast, will it at least teach us to eat slower? Because I like to have a good conversation while, while I'm having dinner. <laughs> I don't know that you can teach that, but I do think that to the extent that you take the time to cook and put things on the table, I think you're reflecting a spirit of, consideration, a spirit of, of generosity, of, new, of nurturing, really a spirit of love. And that carries over to the table and should slow things down a little bit at the table. What is it about stir frying that I, I feel like that when people are stir frying, they're like magicians or they're like ballet artists and things like that, because there's like a dance that goes with stir frying. There's something magical about that. What I was talking about, the technique here, and stir frying is a perfect example of that, of preparing while you're cooking. Mm -hmm. I think it does recall dancing. I think it does recall something that's that's choreographed because you're just constantly moving, and it can really be a beautiful and very rewarding thing. Yeah. One, one of the things that's fascinating about the book is the fact that, you know, everybody likes to take little selfies with their food and stuff. But boy, the pictures in this in, in this book. Oh, my God, this is food porn. I mean, you really take some beautiful pictures. Well, of course, uh, it's not a secret that I'm not the person who does it. But, yeah, the food is good looking. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's not really porn in the sense that it's style to death. Listeners need to understand that this book is for everybody, vegan, vegetarians, big eaters, small eaters. The recipes are fast. I mean, that's why it's called that. They are all under 30-minute recipes. There is a great emphasis, or let's say a de-emphasis on meat. There's still plenty of meat in the book, but the portions are smaller, and there are many, many dishes that don't contain any meat at all. And, and yeah, it's, it's got an international flavor. There, there are... A wide variety of dishes, and I don't know whether I mentioned this, but we're talking seven or eight hundred recipes here, so <laughs> there's really a lot to choose from. And, and it's coming out at the perfect time, Mark, because we're about ready to go into the holiday season. This is when people start getting together. We go indoors to have conversations, to have dinner parties, and stuff like that. I almost can't believe that you're saying that, but of course it's true. 
but that's what makes food fun is that it's like it's like you invite people to the house that haven't been there in a long time and it's like it's like oh my god we're actually together again yeah well as i said i think that i think the cooking i was reacting to the thinking of to the notion of it becoming the holiday season but i i know you're right but i was i was as I said before, this thing about cooking is nourishing other people. And whenever you cook for other people, they see it as an act of love, <laughs> yep. and they should. Um, and that's an important thing. What's a website where people can go to give you a lot of love, Mark? <laughs> MarkBitman.com. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. Please come back to this show any time in the future. I love talking about food, and I know you that imagination of yours is always generating something. Well, I appreciate that, Arrow, and it is what I do, so anytime, just let me know. Excellent. Be brilliant today, sir. Thank you. You too. Take care of yourself.